Prayed. They are going to bring rains, God. And through it, God, we are going to have a bountiful harvest. And God, you are manifesting yourself, God. You have blessed us every day, every morning. And now, God, we can say there is joy every morning. There is a smile, God. Even on the faces of farmers, Lord God Almighty. You have put a smile, Lord God Almighty. And Lord, we are grateful. We want to thank you, God. 
for this country. Thank you, God, for you have given us leaders, God. We pray that you may continue, God, talking to them, speaking to them, God. Let them lead in your wisdom. Let them lead this nation to greater heights, Lord God Almighty. We worship you because you've been a good God to us. The services ahead of us, Lord God Almighty, the early morning service, the second service, God, and the third service, and even the youth fellowship, Lord God Almighty, we want to thank you, Lord. We want to pray for the wedding we are having next Saturday, God, of Chesenge, Lord, and Ruth, that, God, you are going to make it beautiful in your glory, Lord God Almighty. We worship you and glorify your holy name. The speaker of the day, God, I want to pray for him. As he comes to minister here, as he comes to speak to your people, may you use him, Lord God Almighty. And also, God, help us. God, open our hearts, open our minds to be receptive, Lord. Let us listen to your word and may it have a, an impact on our lives, Lord God Almighty. We worship you and glorify your holy name because you are a good Lord. This is a prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Say hi to that person next, sitting next to you as we sit down. Salimia Jirani Mjuli Ehali. It's a beautiful morning. It's a new day the Lord has made that we may rejoice and be glad in. In it. Amen. Yes, I want to invite the speaker of the day. I want to invite the speaker of the day who is going to share uh, the Lord's word with us. Let's put our hands together as Reverend Shepherd joins us here to share God's word with us. Amen. Well, good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord, church. I want to believe it's a wonderful morning that the Lord has blessed us to be here. And we have all reasons to thank him for taking care of us over the, the week and granting us an opportunity to fellowship together this wonderful morning. And I'd like us to turn to God's word in the gospel according to Luke. The Gospel according to Luke, chapter number 13. The gospel according to Luke, chapter number 13. And we'll, com we'll only read uh, uh, three verses. That is verse 6, 7, actually four verses, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Together. This is what God's Word says. Then he told this parable, a man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, for three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year. And I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. Thank you, God, for your word this morning. It's my prayer that through your spirit, that, Lord, you will teach us the truth of your word. And that, Lord, you will help us to live to the full realization of it and put it into practice in our lives. Our Lord, in everything, we will honor and glorify your name for your faithfulness. We thank you and honor you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We can have our seats. Now, this morning, uh, I would like to 
to share a, a sermon or rather um, from the passage that we have read in line with, the, with, our, with our annual theme, and that is uh, bearing fruit, bearing good fruit for Jesus. And um, I'd like you to turn to a friend and help me introduce to him or her my sermon or our topic today. Tell him or her, be fruitful or be cut down. Ah, can you, can you tell him or her again? Be fruitful or be cut down. Now the, <laughs> now, the portion of scripture that you've just read, we, this is Jesus who is giving, or rather narrating this parable, giving a parable after, after he has received news of what, um, of what Pilate, the Roman governor of the day, what he did to some Galilee, Galileans and how he used, mixed, or rather mingled his blood with sacrifices. And then Jesus responds uh, out of what they were sharing and he reminds them that, he, asked, he tells them that, do you think these Galileans were more sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? And then verse 3 tells them, no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. And then he gives a similar uh, parable, or rather a similar story that they are familiar with. And he tells them, all those 18 who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. And then he now gives the parable of the barren fig tree. And as we look into these verses, I'd like to pose uh, some questions to you so that as we go through, you reflect through among these questions. Now, one of the questions is, what kind of tree are you? What kind of tree are you? Are you bearing fruit? And if you are bearing fruit, what fruit are you bearing? Now, the theological uh, meaning of the fig tree that has been mentioned here is the nation of Israel. But I'd like us to uh, look at it now not from the point of the nation of Israel, but now look it to be about you and me. To be about you and me, and asking ourselves, if, if Christ comes today, if Christ comes today, what will he find in you? What will he find in you? What will Christ find in you if he comes today? Will he, will he rejoice that you are fruitful or you are bearing fruit? Or will he say, cut it down? Now, just for us to understand this passage, um, the Bible, or rather Jesus said that a man had a fig tree. And that means that uh, this man owned the fig tree. We also told about a vineyard, which means it's a place where this fig tree was planted. And you think of a vineyard is a confined place where you find this uh, this, this kind of trees, uh, or rather fruit trees planted in such a vineyard. And then um, the, the, what the vineyard represents here is speaking about the body of Christ or the church at large. And when you speak about a tree or the fig tree, speaking about you and I as an individual person on the same note. And so um, at, at this this parable, now, the man who is talked about here is God. And uh, the person who is the vine dresser or the one who attends the vineyard is none other than Jesus. And so, the one who will be cut off or rather who is supposed to bear fruit, it's you and I. 
And now in light of, of understanding the figures or rather the, 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 uh, the symbols that have been used in this particular passage, now I'd like us to look at the expectation of the owner. The expectation of the owner to the tree. And also look at the exasperation about the tree. And also lastly look at the excuse for the tree or the pardon that was done for the tree. And now please note with me that um, when you are looking at the expectation of the tree. Now God expects each and every one of us to bear fruit. And every other person, everyone who is, uh, who is in Christ is, 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 uh, is enjoying the benefits or rather the privileges that come with knowing Christ as his Lord and Savior. So this, this particular tree has privileges. It is enjoying good soil. It is ta being taken care by the owner. He's it's also, um, we also note that it was never uprooted and it has been there for three good years. It has been cared for three good years. And that tells you, again, there is its purpose. It's, its purpose, what the, the, the owner expected from the fruit is that he wanted to enjoy the fruit that this tree produces. And so, the purpose of the fruit was to be productive, to have fruits that one can enjoy. It also had to serve a purpose to feed the person who needed a fruit in it. Let me just jog our minds and take us back to a very familiar uh, fruit that we know. A mango tree, for instance. A mango tree. Now, if if you go to a mango tree in its season, you expect to harvest a, a mango. If you go during that particular season and the tree doesn't bear fruit for the first, the second, and third year, I want to believe the next thing that you do is you cut it out. You, you cut it down. You remove it so that it will stop occupying space and you better... Um, plant another fruit that in due two or three years, it will give you a produce. And so, the expectation of the owner about this tree is to bear fruit. And so, it is expected of us that we bear fruit for God's kingdom, that others would enjoy the fruit that we are giving out. Now, you also note that as there is an expectation from the master or from the owner of this tree, there is also the exasperation about the tree. There is the disappointment that comes from the owner about the tree. And what is he disappointed in it about? This tree is not fulfilling its purpose. This tree is not fulfilling its purpose. It's not bearing any fruit at all. It has no benefit to the owner. It is just occupying space for three years. It is covering other vegetation and, 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 and uh, exhaust, uh, exhausting the other nutrients that other trees would benefit. It is also exhausting the, uh, it's, it's, become, it's blocking sunlight for the other vegetation that want to benefit from, uh, from the sunlight. It is, it is covering a, a, a ground, robbing others' nutrients and, and, and food. And that, that tells us that uh, for the master was disappointed because that space could have been utilized well by being of service, by being of service to other trees, or rather enjoying the fruits of it, or rather enjoying other fruits. Maybe uh, the, he would say, if I had a, an orange tree, probably I would be enjoying oranges. Or if he had planted also in that same vineyard an apple tree, 
then the apple tree is suffocating or it's not uh, getting all that it needs to get simply because um, this other tree is not fruitful, it's not fulfilling its purpose, it's not beneficial, it is consuming all the nutrients and as it consumes all these nutrients, they are not going down to its roots so that it will bring forth the produce. Now, again in the same verses, we also notice the excuse or the pardon for the tree that has been given. And the Bible tells us that in verse 7, So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now have been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? And so verse that is the disappointment or the exasperation of the, of, of the owner. And then verse 8, Sir, the man replied, this is the vine dresser, or the vineyard attendee. Uh, um, Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. So there are two options for this tree. One, it is to be cut down because it's not yielding any fruit. It is unfruitful. So if it's unfruitful, then it's supposed to come down and not continue to occupy space. When you cut it down, you don't just leave it there. Every time when we cut trees, what do we do? We make charcoal or we burn them. We, we just burn them because you cannot just leave them there. If not burning them, others would opt to sell. But in most cases, at the end of the, of the day, we burn the what? The tree. Now, the other option that the plea was made by the attendee is that we can cultivate again. We can cultivate it again. He says in verse 8, I'll dig around it and fertilize it. I'll dig around it and fertilize it. And that tells you there's a lot of work to be done on this tree that has not produced any fruit for three good years. And that tells you that the digging and the fertilization, it is not something that is very easy. The digging and fertilization is not something that is very easy because it has to do with bringing it anew, reviving it seeing to it whether there is anything that can be done for this tree before cutting it down so that it would yield fruits. And what do we draw from, from such a parable or from such an explanation? Now, it is expected of you and I to be fruitful. The Lord expects you and I to be fruitful. John 15 verse 18 will remind us once again the Bible says in John 15 verse 8 that this is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples. So when we are being fruitful we glorify God. When you are being fruitful, we show that we are disciples of Christ Jesus. Why am I speaking about being fruitful and the expectation that, is, uh, that Christ expects of us? Because we have come to faith in Christ. We are in Christ. Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians 6.20 that we have been bought at a price. So mean that we belong to Christ. We are his possession. So nothing that we do uh, uh, that is ours, but everything that we are geared to do now that we are in Christ should be for the glory of who? For the glory of God, for the edification of the body of Christ. He also reminds us that now that when we are in Christ, Paul still reminds us that he will supply 
all our needs according to thy riches in glory. So every other nutrient that we, we, we wish or we want for us to be fruitful, he says he will provide, he provides it, he has supplied all we need for us to grow and mature in him. And he has done it through his word and he has also done it through the church. He has done it through his word. His word equips us. His word disciplines us. His word teaches us. His word aligns us to his will. In his church, he says that he has equipped the church that with every kind of giftings that we will, ne we will not lack in any way. So the expectation that is required of us is to make disciples. It is to make disciples. Not just only being a tree or just existing or being a child, a son and a daughter in God's kingdom, but doing something for the Lord. You know, there is an expectation that God expects of you. And he has given you the season. He has given you a period that you would accomplish that purpose that he has called you as a child in his kingdom. And maybe I throw a question to us. Since you knew Christ, how many, how many have you brought in in Christ? And if you have not brought any in Christ, what are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? What will we be rewarded for? Because I'm certain that we will not be rewarded for sitting in pews. I know that we need to be rewarded for touching a soul. So how many have you brought in? And if not, what are you doing about it? Again, please, brothers, remember that we, we are not called to compete with one another. We are not called in a ministry to compete because it's not about competition. Paul reminds us in Romans 12, verse 6 to 8, that it's according to the proportion of faith that one has been given. That if it's anything that you are, about, you, you are, you are doing, then, then do it in accordance to the faith that has been proportioned to, to you. So it's not about competition, like, oh, I can do better than you. It's not about competition, but it's about utilizing the, what God has given you for the glory and honor of his name. Again, what do we learn? The second thing, he not only expects us to be fruitful and to do it for his glory, but we are also reminded about the patience of the Lord, how patient God is with us. Back again to the story, when, when, when he came and discovered that there is no fruit in this particular tree, he said, for three years now I've been coming to look for fruit. You know, you would imagine the owner coming every other year, every other month to look for a fruit and he doesn't find it. For three good years, that tells you that this person has been very patient with this tree. So maybe in the first day he thought I should cut it down. The second, uh, the, the sixth month he thought maybe I should give it some ample time. He came to the second year, it is not happening. The third year, it is not happening. And so he says, I'll cut it down. And so he says uh, in verse 8, Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year. What a great patience our Lord has for us. So the Lord is very patient with us. He has given us grace period to come into his fold. God has given us grace to come into his fold. The time that we are living in, we are living in the dispensation of grace. But we are, we should not misuse that grace in the name of God is still gracious. God is still gracious. No. But we should maximize this opportunity and be aright with God and come to, into his fold. Second Peter 3.9 reminds us that he is patient and doesn't want anyone to perish, but wants everyone to come to his fold. First, Second Peter 3.15, his patience, that the Lord's patience means salvation for everyone who comes to him, through him, in his name. Amen? 2 Peter 3, 7 and 10 reminds us that there is a day that is coming, a destruction 
day has been set where the unfruitful, or rather the ungodly, and everything that is on this earth or this world will, will be destroyed. We are reminded that in verse 10 that the day of the Lord will come like a thief and everything will be laid bare. I don't know what that would mean for you as, as a tree or as, as a, a Christian in relation to what God has called us to do. And then the Lord again, the Lord will cut off the unfruitful tree rather the unfruitful person that doesn't yield fruits. John 15, 2 a reminds us that he cuts every branch that bears no fruit. John 15, 6, if, if we are not in Christ, we will wither and will be thrown away into the fire and be burned. And so the question that I would like to pose to us this wonderful morning is where where are you at where do you stand are you fruitful or you are waiting to be cut off are you in this one year season that god has given you or 10 days season or a month or two season or maybe a, a year season or maybe some minutes season that God has given you so that you may be fruitful? It is a question that um, I'm leaving it to us. Or maybe you are the one who has been given a second chance, that God is doing the digging and the fertilization in you so that you become fruitful. I know at times we tend to complain much about, oh, why is this happening? Oh, this is taking place. But have you ever asked yourself whether if it's not God who is making you go through such hilly, hilly, hilly mountains and valleys so that he would make you fruitful? Or is it all about complaining? I think probably it would be a, high, a highest time that we say, God, make me what you want me to, to be. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for reminding us that you have called us, Lord, we be fruitful for the glory and honor of your name. Thank you that you remind us that we have a purpose and we need to accomplish that purpose. Maybe you are here in our service and probably you have not come in the fold and to know Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'd like to give you an opportunity because Behold, Christ stands at the door and knocks. He who opens for him, he will come in and he will dine with him. Maybe you're here and you've never received Christ or you've never had an opportunity. You cannot recall a day you surrendered your life to Christ. I'll give you an opportunity. The opportunity is now. You can carry your hand up and we pray together. Lord, thank you for us and for this wonderful morning service that you've blessed us. It's my prayer that, Father, your word will continue to linger in our hearts and minds, and that, Lord, we will align ourselves to your will, and we will continue to be more fruitful in everything that we do. We thank you and honor you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give a better hand clap. Asante sana, Reverend Shepherd. Yes. Um, we are right about now, we are going to be listening to our matangazo. After that, I want to invite the praise and worship to come forward. We'll do a hymn, what a fellowship, as we collect the offerings. But first, let's listen to our announcements. Greetings, and here are our weekly announcements. On our Sunday program, we have the following services. The first service, which is English, starts at 7.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. The second service, also English, starts at 8.45 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. The third service, which is Swahili, starts at 10.45 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. 
All youths are encouraged to participate in their events and also to attend their service which starts at 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. For our children, our Sunday school services happen during the second and the third services. For the teenagers, their service happen during the second service. Our midweek services which we are all encouraged to attend all start at 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. That is on Wednesday, we have the prayer fellowship on Thursday, the youth Bible study and on Friday, the estate fellowship. Our giving, we are all encouraged to send our tithes and offering through our pay bill number 33-1292. All ladies meet for prayers every first Saturday of the month at 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. here in church. The AIC National Women Prayer Conference will be held on 10th to May 12th at AIC Kosorani Grounds. Charges are only 6,000 shillings. All ladies are requested to meet after the second and the third service. The AACMD will be held on May 5th. We are all asked to prepare. The star and the cadet will be graduating today during the third service. We appreciate all the parents who allowed their children to attend our April vocational Bible study. May the Lord bless you for the sacrifice you made. Thank you for your patience and time and have a great week ahead. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, we are going to pray for the offerings. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for this chance to give what uh, you have blessed us with, Lord God Almighty. And as we give, God, may you continue blessing us. And those who don't have, I pray that you may keep providing for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to join in the hymn, Water Fellowship. Our pay bill number is project is 331292. You can give your offerings and your tithes through the pay bill number. Thank you. Thank you. 
So I believe today is a, a good day. I want to appreciate you. Thank you for your availability. I thank you for coming and worshiping with us. God bless you for taking your time. I know he has a purpose and a reason over your lives. Thank you, the preacher of the day, reminding us we have to keep on being fruitful. And I'm sure so that we can be able to see that really we do what Christ left us uh, to do. So it is my mandate and your mandate just to ask yourself whether you are fruitful and areas that you are supposed to be fruitful, it is better you implement. I have a letter here I want to read. This letter is from African Inland Church, Tanzania. This letter is written to us and um, it's written in Swahili. Kanisa Laia is Shabab LCC, Nakuru, Kenya. Tunawasalimu kwa jina la baba wetu Yesu Kristo kutoa shukrani zetu za dhati kwa kanisa la Shaba Belsis uongozi wa kanisa la AIC uh, Tanzania mbugani mpanda kwa washiriki na kanisa tunawasalimu katika jina la Yesu Kristo aliye hai tunawashukuru sana Kristo aliyetukomboa na kutuanga kutuunganisha kuwa familia moja na ndugu wa moja kwa ajili ya kufanya kazi ya baba kanisa la AIC Tanzania mbugani mpanda tunatoa shukrani zetu za dhati kwenyu kuwa kwa kutudhamini na kuidhamini kazi ya Mungu kwa kutoa mali zenyu ili kulifanya huduma ya Mungu iendelee mbele zaidi huku kwetu umishonari AIC Tanzania mbugani mpanda uh, kupitia kwa evangelist Stephen Damboki tunakiri sababu ya kuwashukuru sana kwa kila mmoja aliyeshiriki kwa namna moja au nyingine ikiwa ni pamoja na kutuombea kutoa mali yake kwa ajili ya kutuwezesha kupata kiazio ya kiwanja kimoja ambapo mwenyewe kiwanja ametupa Hivyo baada tuko na uhitaji wa kupata hela ili tuweze kuvinunua viwanja vyote. Kanisa la AIC Tanzania Mbugani tuna kila sababu ya kuwashukuru na kumruhusu uh, na pia kumruhusu mtumishi wa Mungu Evangelist Daboki aje Mungu asidi kuwabariki zaidi katika maisha yenu ya sasa na ya mbinguni na baadaye tunahitaji uh, tuna uwepo wenu mahali hapa kwa ajili ya kuendeleza kazi ya Mungu mahali hapa kama Mungu alivyo waongoza uh, kutufadhili pia tunawakaribisha sana huku mpanda Mungu awabariki katika kazi yake mlio itiwa wako katika kazi ya Bwana uh, ja Jefeti Edward Busani mwinjilisti wa kanisa kwa hivyo hiyo ni barua imetoka uh, Tanzania tunajua mwinjilisti wetu kama wiki uh, pili hivi za pita alikiondoka na kwenda mahali pale na wengine wenyu mulishiriki katika tendo lolote labda kwa kutoa kwa kuomba na kazi ni nzuri kwa hivyo tuendelee kuomba barua hiyo ni shukrani uh, basi naomba sasa tusimame asanteni watoto wenyu tumekuwa nao tangia Jumatatu mpaka siku ya Rahamisi for PBS asanteni Uh, pia kwa sababu ya jambo hilo pia asanteni sana kwa sababu ya siku ya Jumanne kwa ibada ya ya um, actually hospitality uh, leader wetu moja ama shemanzi wetu moja um, aliyeitwa Margaret Karanja na ibada ikafana vizuri tokea hapa mpaka nyumbani na tukamalizia siku uh, familia wanashukrani nyingi asanteni kwa kujitolea kwenyu pia asanti uh, pia tuna washiriki wengine wawili pia walipata na mambo uh, babake Stella uh, Mzinga ameweza tuliweza jana uh, kumpumzisha na hiyo ikapita 
Tumebakisha mwingine mmoja anaitwa Damaris Mwende baba yake atapumzishwa tarehe moja upande wa Western. Na kwa hivyo hayo yote tuendelee kuomba asanteni kwa kujitolea kwenyu asanteni kwa matoleo mnayoyatoa uh, wakati mwingine yanahusika katika kazi kama hizo na tunawashukuru kwa sababu ya hiyo. And therefore the Lord bless you and keep you and the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace and you say let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so, so much for today. Thank you for allowing us to come to your house. Primarily, God, to hear your word. And also, Father, to present our prayer request to you, our thanksgiving to you. And I want to pray for our, our members. Bless them, God. Be their God in everything. Thank you for the week that has ended. Thank you for the week we are starting. Lord, we want to pray. Your presence, your Holy Spirit will guide us. That, Lord, you will safeguard us from all evil, God, and we will continue experiencing your greatness and your goodness over our lives, God. I pray for our members employed in various places. Remember them. Pray favor upon them in the name of Jesus. Continue giving them breakthrough in their places of work. Father, be their God in everything. Those ones operating businesses, we want to commit them to your hands in the name of Jesus. And praying that, God, you are going to give them breakthrough, that all things will work well for your own and glory, God. Farmers and livestock, keep us, God. We want to pray for them. Thank you, Lord, because they have planted. And, Lord, even in some areas, Lord, we know that, Lord, their plants have germinated. Father, Lord, we want to pray. You are a God of providence. Continue providing rain. Rain that, Lord, is of our blessings, God. And we know that, God, you are in control of all situations, God. We want to pray, Father, even for this week, uh, remembering our children, God, as we are about just to take them back to school. They are the coming uh, week after the, the week that we are starting. We want to pray that you bless the parents. You'll provide all their needs according to your riches in Christ. You'll visit them. And whatever is needed for these children to go back to school, you are a God of providence. God, provide to them. Thank you, Lord, because you're so loving. Your servants have given their offerings, their tithes, God, and we want to pray and commit them to your hands, God. Bless them, God. We remember the families who are in challenge, praying for the family of uh, Deacon John Karanja. Be with them, God. Continue strengthening them. Praying for the family of Stera Singer. Be with them. Encourage them. And praying for Dolcas Mendes family. Be with them and encourage them. Stand with them in this time of mourning and be their God in all. We praise you, we honor you, we glorify you. As we leave your house, go with us. For in Jesus' name we pray and believe. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus. So go in peace and God be with you.